and so today's video i'm trying to save you guys some money all we're going to be using are bottom sweeper jigs and these asian shore crabs um i think they're one of the most underrated baits when it comes to tog fishing you know from a price standpoint you can't beat them i mean they're free if you just know how to catch them if you've never gone to catch them check out this video up top it's uh you know kind of a how-to but let's uh show you how we rig them up all right man so today's trip we got ourselves some asian shore crabs about like i don't know three dozen or so we don't want to really take more than what we need and all i'm doing is pairing it with a bottom sweeper jig I cut a part of the shell off that way it gets sent in the water and all right, let's try this piling to start looks like a good one we got 22 mile per hour winds today so i don't know how long we're going to be able to fish with this type of wind with current but we'll give it a shot okay there we go there we go that's a good first fish oh, that guy smoked that crab i think it's a tog yeah buddy white chinner look at that that's a great way to start the freaking day Woo -wee. all right we're gonna try this piling try and shear the kayaks behind it to kind of keep us somewhat tucked away from the wind which is kind of there's like a perfect space for the kayak and if you're on either side of it man you're getting blown oh there's a hit oh there we go oh yeah you're on if you're on either side of it you're getting blown away whoa nice tog Woo, he wasn't done. He saw a, he saw my hand reaching for him. Look at that. Beauty. Now this guy is what we would consider oop, heartbreak on a hook. I'm not even measuring him. I'm going to say he's about an inch under. Still a nice fish though. So I think the biggest mistake most people make when they tog fish is they're hooking on crabs wrong or you know in a way that they could steal the bait i like going between the joints and having the hook right where all like that meat and stuff is because that's what they're really going for they really don't care about the shell um if you ever watch any like the underwater videos of tog feeding they're you know sitting there picking at the crab trying to get to the the meat so by trying to keep the hook point buried in the meat I find that I have a way better hookup ratio than I would if, you know, the hook was going outside of a shell or somewhere else. Now, that's just my personal belief. Now, everybody's got their own opinion, so don't, you know, take it as it is, I guess, my opinion. Because I know there's guys that like hooking crabs through the bottom of the triangle and out the top of the shell. If you're using a smaller crab, I, I've had success with that, but if you're using half crabs, sometimes it's just tough. Oh, there's a hit. There we go. There we freaking go. And look at that. Not a big one, but I'm telling you, the hookup ratio when you hook it like this is much better, at least from what I've noticed, than if you hook it up differently. This is a little Dinkasaurus. Which I ain't mad, man. I'll be honest with you. With some of the weather we've had recently, I'll take catching fish all day, even if it's in crappy conditions. Getting a fresh bait down. Marking tons of fish, man. I think it mostly is tog stacked on top of each other, but there's definitely other fish, striper, sea bass. Something's got a hold of it. Just waiting for him to fully take it. There we go. Oh, there we go. That's a big one. That's a big one. Man. Oh. No, 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 no. Got to get him out of that structure. If this is a tie, it's going to be a nice one, but I'm thinking it might be something different. I'm thinking maybe possibly a striper. Could it be our favorite species? I won't say the name and jinx it. Might be a nice tie, who knows? 
Yeah, it's a nice tog. Man, he's getting the net. Man, look at this guy. Togzilla, baby. Whew. Man, look at that freaking tog, man. I'm going to keep him in the water as long as I can because that's a freaking stud. And I don't want to pull him out. I want to get a picture with this guy. All right, we're going to get a quick measurement. Get him back in. 18 inches. That is a freaking stud, man. I want a bomb sweeper and a crab. Look at this. Whoa, easy buddy. We're going to get you back in the water. There he goes. Stud, man. Awesome with it. Hopefully a big one comes out. It. Oh, there we go. There we go. That's what always happens, man. The small one will grab it. Miss. And usually the bigger fish will come after it. But, I mean, this one's not much bigger than what hit our line originally. A little dink. back down another thing I like to do I try and keep my rod as low as I can so that when I do hit bottom I'm not you know my rods not too high up because you need to be in a good position from the kayak to set that hook because they are bait thieves man you don't you give them just an inch they'll take a mile There we go. Oh yeah. Like like that, man. If you if you don't have your line tight, that fish is gonna rob you nine times out of ten. Tell you what, man, tog fishing could be very frustrating if you haven't done it in a while and you haven't had that touch for their bite. There he goes. Alright, let's uh, try a different area. I'm sure each of these, you know, pilings hold multiple fish, but I don't know. Sometimes I, I'm under the belief that there's a, like, one big one that's kind of like the apex of the piling. Oh, oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Gotta get him out. I can feel him. He might break me off. I can feel him rubbing the, the bridge. Ah, nothing worse than when you feel that line just chafing. Man. That's a nice one, man. That's another keeper size, too. That guy's, my guess, probably right at 15. I mean, golly, look at that, man. That is a fat tog. This guy, let's uh, use the pliers because do the least amount of harm for him. There we go. That's much better than me trying to sit there and finagle with them and drop them. I always feel bad, you know what I mean? If you're if you're not gonna if you're not harvesting the fish, I don't really it doesn't bother me, but if it's a fish that I'm trying to release, I always kind of feel bad if I you know, leave it in a better and worse shape than it was. Try there again. Piling, but the wind's blowing me the exact opposite direction, which makes for a long, whoa, long day, especially in a kayak. To be honest with you, when you get these conditions, it makes me kind of wish I had one of those uh, Minn Kota. Man, look at that guy. Woo! Makes me wish I had one of the Minn Kota. Uh, whoa. Thought he was done. Kayaks, man. Or the old town with the, the trolling motor. Or it's a little less 
physical. Look at this. That's another stud, man. Whew. Ah, man. This guy. Easily keeper. And unfortunately in New Jersey, right now, if you're meat hunting, you can only keep one. Whew. But it opens up in a, in a month or so to like five or six. I'm going to try and drop it behind again. Soon we're probably going to be getting into the spins where the wind pushing at us, tide going this way, just starts spinning the kayak. So I'm trying to make the most of this time where they're kind of equal with the wind and tide. Oh, there we go. Oh, I got the smaller one. Definitely felt a bigger hit prior. But I think they're so schooled up right now down there that it's kind of like whichever one gets to the crab last seems to be the winner. Here. This looks like a promising piling. Oh, yep, there's a hit. There we go. What I say, man, a promising piling always has a tog. Maybe not a big tog, but it's like a cookie cutter, a 13 inch class fish. Oh, oh, there we go. He got me on the slack. I thought we were going to miss this one. Even like these like mediocre sized ones, like I don't know, this guy's probably 14, maybe 14 and a half inches. They have some fight in them, boy. It's like hooking into like a little freight train. All right, let's try dropping right there. Man, there's, I think there's some big stripers mixed in with these guys because some of those marks on the screen are definitely not tog. Oh, that freaking didn't even get to the bottom. I felt something weird, like a slack. Oh, look at that. That striper followed him up. That's pretty cool. Striper literally followed him up. I'm going to let him down for a minute, see what happens. Although, it's a pretty hard way to hook a striper. I also think it's highly illegal. That's pretty cool. That's a big striper, man. That's pretty cool. Alright, got a fresh crab on. Gonna get him down. Hopefully there's some more hungry tog at the bottom. Oh man, look at that. Golly. Gonna be the bane of my existence today. Alright, got another crab on. There we go. See how fast we can get a hit. Oh, there it is. There it is. That's freaking amazing. Oh, swimming up. He gave me a good fight for about 20 seconds and then called it. Oops, there he goes. We've been lucky, man. We've been only using the half ounce jig the whole time. 
sometimes when the tide starts picking up I usually move up to about a three quarter ounce jig sometimes one depend on oh man that was fast depend on how much current we have but right now half ounce seems to be holding well and you know if you're fishing light you get the better fight out of the fish than you do fighting the weight of the jig when they're biting but you know when you run out of time you run out of time oh there we go i mean look at that it's hard to want to leave this but when you gotta go you gotta go 